What's up everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a funk disco style beat with my new sample pack, Funk Essentials, which is out now on Loop Masters and Loop Cloud. So just to give you an idea of what we're working with, I'll just let it play through first. Okay, so there it is. So I'm gonna start with the drums, as normally when I'm making music, I always start with the drums myself. So let's check out the kick first of all. So you'll notice it's on the one and the three, and the reason I did that and not having it on every single, um, like one, two, three, four, is that in disco tracks, sometimes you'll hear they have like the kick on the one, snare on the two, and then the kick again on the three. And the kick itself is a one-shot sample. It's called the Classic Kick. No EQing or anything on that. And that's what I wanted to do with this sample pack actually was to you know, have sounds that you can drag straight in and they don't really need much processing on them at all. So next thing we've got here are the disco hi-hats. And I'll just play those for you now. All I've done there is put a little compressor on it to side chain it with the kick and that's just to let the kick come through a little bit in the mix. And let that initial attack of the kick come through. Next we got this snare here. And this snare here is called the Disco Time Snare. The snare, what I've done here is put a little saturator on it, just to beef it up a tiny little bit. And the Ableton Saturator is really nice with this analog clip setting. Just adds a little bit of crunchiness to it and sort of helps compress it a touch as well. So that was the snare. I'll just play you what we've got already. So already there, you've got a nice groove with those hi-hats, um, beefy kick and beefy snare. It's getting you in the mood to, you know, to add some more funky elements to that. Next thing we've got here is the chunky funky clap so that's another thing that's sort of classic in disco music is to have that clap with a little bit of room reverb on it what i've got here is i've set up a valhalla vintage verb uh, with the concert hall setting mix always 100 if you're using it as a send and return and then the decay at 1.45 seconds and a little bit of low cut on there to take some of the low end out of that reverb. You don't want it getting too messy in the low end. And then I've also EQ'd that quite a, quite a bit. So you can hear there that it's brightening it up a little bit and it's just getting rid of again this, sometimes you don't really need this mid range. I wanted the claps to be nice and light so I took out a lot of the mid and low end range past about 400 hertz. Next, we've got this classic percussion. So this is a, a shaker and a tambourine as well. I'll play that. And in the context of the drum loop. And that's another classic thing you kind of hear in old disco funk tracks. So we've got that. Um, again, no, no EQ or anything. The sound is pretty good straight out of the box. And all I've done there is add a reverb to help that sit back in the mix a bit. So if I play just the reverb sound. So yeah, that's the reverb. Just helps it sit further back in the mix rather than being right up in your face with the kick and the snare and it just creates a bit of depth, not having every instrument completely dry. And then all I've got on the drum bus is a compressor. So this is one of my favorite compressors, the CLA-76 from Waves. And what that's doing here is it's just compressing about three to five dBs, gluing the whole loop together into one cohesive sound. 
So let's hear that. So it's also adding a little bit of volume there too, um, but the purpose of it is to compress the sounds and to glue it together. And then I've got the saturator as well, again on the drums, I find that's really, really useful as almost like a compressor again, um, and to add a little bit of crunch. So I'll AB that for you now. So again, adds a little bit of loudness and just a touch of distortion on the top as well, which I find, again, glues the stuff together. Next in this, we've got the bass. So this is a loop called the dynamic groove. So you can see there, if we look at the waveform itself, the level is pretty consistent. So it doesn't need really much compression or anything like that. And that's because it comes from the uh, the Novation base station, which I've, I've got right here. And it's, I think it must have some sort of inbuilt compression or something in there because every time you record it, it the waveform is just so fat already and it's, it's just got an unbelievable sound. So that's where that sound comes from. And on the, the processing chain, I've got a little bit of uh, like boosting the top end. And I've also got, last thing there is the, uh, the compressor. Just side chaining to the kick to, um, to duck it out of the way and again make room for that kick to come through. Next we have the roads. The chords that we've got there, if I just go to this other synth for a moment, F major 7, E minor 7, and then we actually go D minor 9, rather than going. That just made the chord progression a little bit more interesting, a little bit more spicy. And again, there's not any processing on that just because it um, it doesn't really need anything. It's got enough um, processing and warmth straight out of the box. So next up here, we've got the guitar. So that came from uh, a Gibson jazz style guitar. And again, all I've got on here, because I've recorded it nicely, I've used some a little bit of compression and, and EQ on it to begin with. Um, all I needed was an EQ to remove the bass. And that again, it just makes room for the bass and the drums, which we've got so far. So we're just making some room down there for those bass frequencies. Next, what we've got here is uh, this lead sound. And that comes from one of the silent presets in this pack. So. Within this pack, there's 50 unique silent sounds, and there's about 10 bass, 10 synth, 10 pad, 10 leads, and then 10 effects. So this is the lead funk saw sound. And I've kind of modeled this sound off um, some of my favorite Moog presets on the, um, on the Moog synths. And you'll notice here that it's got quite a lot of expression, particularly if you use the, um, the mod wheel. Um, and most of the lead and bass patches I've done this where you use this mod wheel down here and what it does is it um, it's mapped to an LFO with, uh, with pitch, like a pitch LFO. So the pitch is going like this when you move the mod wheel up and it just allows you to have, um, you know, more expression with your playing. So that was that sound and all I've got on the, uh, on the processing is an EQ, again to get rid of that bass, that bass area. I've added a Waves H delay, which is one of my favorite delay plugins. And I've also sent a little bit of that reverb there. So if we move off, if we move up to this section up here, you can hear it a little bit more clearly. So I'll take the delay and the reverb off. A little bit too dry in my opinion. I'll play it in the context of the track. No, it still sounds decent, but that adding that delay and that reverb back on there gives it its own place in the mix. Yeah, 
sounds a bit more wet and nice in my opinion. So the next sound we've got here is the, uh, the Brassy Boy. I've modeled this from like a Jupiter style sound. And I've added a little bit of the, uh, the pitch bend as well. Um, just as a bit of expression again. And what I like to do with these sort of synth hits in the middle of the track is you'll notice here on the first one, the particular inversion that I've got, it's an A minus seven. And then the second time you hear it, we're playing this inversion. So the first one I've taken this G and moved it down an octave here. And the second time around, the G goes back up the top. And it's good to variate your chord inversions when you're when you're making disco and funk again because it just adds movement, it adds variation, it doesn't sound like you've just copy and pasted things over. Next preset here we've got is the funk wobble. So it's just playing one chord there, A minus seven. That's almost as a percussive element rather than a musical element because it's very, you know, very sort of staccato and groovy. So that's the funk wobble preset. And the last one we've got here is this funk chord, which I've, um, I've, I've used more as a pad to layer with that Rhodes and I'll just solo it. We've got, um, it's playing a slightly different version of the, uh, of the Rhodes chords. If I layer that now with these Rhodes up here. What it's actually doing there is it's adding a ninth on top. The original Rhodes is playing this. And what this one is doing is it's playing up here this extra G note, which is actually the ninth. The full chord would be this. If I were to play F major nine, then it would go to the E. And back to this, this is actually a D minor 11 now. That's quite a rich full chord, but rather than playing all of those notes on both instruments, because we've already got this lower, on the roads, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this top section here. So just these four notes. And then we go. So splitting up the notes into having the top part of the chord playing on one instrument and the bottom part on another instrument can be really effective to A, clean up your mix and B, just to make it sound a little bit more musical and a little bit more um, sort of professional. So that's basically it for this beat. As you can see, there's not many effects, not much processing. And that's because all of the sounds are quite nice straight out of the box already. And I hope these sounds allow you to come up with some cool ideas. And I'm gonna put the link to the pack in the description here. Also next week, I'm gonna be back with another video of a full walkthrough of all the silent presets from the pack. So keep an eye out for that and we'll see you then.